What's up folks, this is Dan from Discern, and these are my thoughts on the new album from Satellites and Sirens, Tanks. Satellites and Sirens is a pop band from Nashville, Tennessee, led by Jeff Hunker. He formed the band back in 2006, and he's released something like three EPs and four full-length albums since then. It's quite remarkable that uh, this band, whose origin story starts with a group of dudes answering a Craigslist ad, has been at it for 10 years now. This many years, this many albums, growing from the seeds of a Craigslist ad is a pretty unconventional story. If you ask me, uh, I think this band hit their high point on the record frequency. On that album, they felt the most convincing, in other words, the least fake. Their uh, variety of pop synth sounds was as eclectic as the instruments on the album cover. And they tapped into their rock side of the pop rock genre they sort of fall in, uh, a la Reliant K, Copeland, uh, maybe creeping into Fallout Boy territory, where on other albums they have tended to lean into a style more in line with the strictly pop side of their influences. But all along, throughout their discography, while the music has wandered between decently interesting and, and mind-numbingly flaky, the lyrics have been consistently flat. Uh, in the past, I've found myself laughing or groaning in reaction to some of these lyrics. Too many corny rhymes, narrowly simple lyrical themes, and line after line after line of drearily mild talk about God and love with the theological depth and thought of most middle school youth groups. Lyrics have never been uh, this band's strong point, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, this new album, Tanks, is not a return to the sounds of frequency. Uh, it is a high production, glossy pop album, but it lacks a personality and, and an excitement that I think this album could have had if it indulged more in its quirky and spunky electropop synths and if it dug deep and spoke in dynamic and creative lyrics. The album starts off with, hey, this is the life. Uh, and if you're like me, you're thinking, oh, it sure is, what a title. Uh, the chorus of this song has a pretty good vocal melody, uh, although the instrumental backing of this whole track has almost no attention grabbers. There's uh, an electropop styled synth soup, uh, but it's kind of faceless, it's kind of forgettable in that way. The next track, Who We Are, should be the chance for them to tell me who they are, right? Uh, well, let's just take a quick peek at the lyrics. Uh, in the chorus here, it says, love is who we are, we shine like stars covering the sky, and look how far we've come. The world is ours, yeah, we all align. Riveting uh, and vividly descriptive, right? It's mostly just positive nonsense, uh, which goes for the bridge as well, where they sing, nothing here can break us, because we know just who we are. I don't know who you are yet, you just said, love is who we are. Uh, anyway, nothing here can save us but the love beyond the stars. And that's about when the eyes uh, rolled out of the back of my head. Uh, it's needlessly nonspecific. It's nauseatingly trite. Moving on, we have the song Chasing Photos, which takes a more 80s synth approach than the previous tracks. The bass line in the verses has a rhythmic bounce to it. It's pretty engaging. There's a dreamy guitar solo uh, about midway through the song that's mostly aimless, but has a quality tone to it. The lead vocal in the choruses is sung exclusively in falsetto uh, on the tape, on the final product. It kind of ends up as uh, uh, with poor results. Um, it's kind of cringy, kind of off-putting at times. Seemed like maybe a good idea up in the old brain, but didn't really uh, produce on the album. It just didn't work, whether by lack of skill or by lack of post-production. Um, at times you can hear him almost, but not quite hitting the notes, uh, like, like really pushing a head voice and stretching it beyond a pleasant range. 
Lyrically, this song is a great example of where it sounds like Jeff Hunker, the lead singer and, and lead songwriter, had a good idea, or at least a, a respectable idea, uh, for a song, but delivered it in, in amateur and in bumpy phrasing. In the chorus, he uses the phrase, go out and live the photo a few times. Um, look, this song is about living your life in reality rather than through staged photographs. Think Instagram. I understand, you know, this is the theme, uh, and I think it's a timely and relevant theme in our modern culture. Reliant K actually touched on this in uh, their song Look On Up earlier this year. I think they did it much more tastefully, much more creatively. Uh, I mean, on this song, the phrase, go out and live the photo, is clunky, and it's entirely unpoetic. Uh, good idea, thematically, but poor execution lyrically. A few tracks later, we have the title track, Tanks. The instrumental is mostly a nameless, unidentifiable pop affair. Uh, passable, but just generally uninteresting. Lyrically, well, it's, it's more of the same, sadly. I will say the lyric, uh, where the heart beats louder than the cry for war, pretty creative, pretty powerful lyric, um, pretty powerful metaphor, but it's followed by, like tanks, you can trust we will crush everything with love. <laughs> and that's when I started laughing. How can I take this seriously? <laughs> we're, we're gonna take this to the front lines and we're gonna crush them with love. <laughs> oh, brother. The next track, Stereo, is the best song on the record, uh, hands down. It opens up with a deep, warm synth carrying the chordal melody. It's a rich sound, super inviting, super calming, and the lead sound that then rides the top of these chords has a, a delicate and playful jump to it, really reminiscent of the blissful sounds of early Owl City records. I was totally hooked on the sound, uh, and I'm really glad they gave it like 30 to 40 seconds of time to sort of explore that sonic space, make it a solid intro. Overly, this track uh, is, a, is another push into the 80s vibe. They do it really smoothly, I think, here. Uh, the way the vocal melody that, that caps off the chorus interplays with the bass is really wonderful. The pacing is just right, you know, a, a good balance between driving and grooving and laid back and unhurried. Lyrically, I had basically given up at this point. <laughs> the first line is, I want to love so much it erases hate. Youthful, almost comical ignorance. Uh, this is exactly the fake lyricism that Christian music burns people with. Uh, I'm not saying love shouldn't conquer hate. Uh, I'm saying that it's nearly impossible to find a lyric like this compelling. It has its head so far in the clouds, so distant from reality, it's silly. And you could say, he's just dreaming big, you know, but I would say he's just dreaming. It's a fluffy clouds and rainbows, make-believe world. The next track, Enough, takes the massively glorious reality of God's grace and love being shown to sinners who fully are undeserving of his love and drains it of almost all spiritual nutrition by boiling it down to this line. Talking from God's perspective, talking to us, I know you probably wouldn't say so, but you think I love you for your halo. It's enough just to be enough. This is faith in faith, if I've ever seen it. Uh, what is the substance behind these feelings? Aren't you loved by God because of your relationship to Christ? You know, isn't, isn't Christ your righteousness that gives you the ability to stand before God, confident, resting in his faithfulness and love? You aren't loved by God because, well, you just are. <laughs> There's substance and richness to God's love for you. It's a beautiful reality. And I think this song just blew the opportunity to explore that beauty. As the album continues on, we have some songs that play in toward the dance pop vibe and some that play toward an 80s ballad vibe, uh, but they generally sound pretty typical and, and forgettable. Uh, and lyrically, they go from sort of a silly mess to a theological dumpster fire. 
And I guess to appease my bruised brain and soul, uh, I'll just assume he's singing about a girl because the lyrics are so often arbitrarily defined. I guess it's not too much of a logical stretch to rationalize that, I, I guess. Uh, and I'll only talk about two more songs here and then we'll, I'll shut my mouth, we'll wrap this up. Firstly, the second to last track on the album, Wildfire. The music in the chorus is decently catchy, sort of punchy and choppy with these rhythmically staccato triplets, pretty cool sound, uh, which then opens up and unleashes into a, a dance pop instrumental section with a riffing electric guitar. The ending is pretty creative too, where the song leads you to believe that it's, it's playing through an outro. Uh, the drums mostly drop out, the vocals carry it out, and they, they sort of echo into nothing on the last note. And then a guitar picks a few notes, the vocals shout, hey, and, and they come back in for another chorus. Clever ending, really, uh, really nicely done. The last track, Waste Some Time, that one could keep me up at night if I let it, uh, not musically, uh, because it's, it's pretty unassuming, just kind of simple and cheery. It uh, does have a nice rhythm guitar offering a little musical phrasing in between the vocals and the chorus. The lyrics, though, make no sense. Uh, the song is a typical, hey baby, let's, let's hang out, let's waste time together, shoot the breeze, do whatever those cool kids do. <laughs> We've probably all heard a song like this before. Uh, it's a relatable feeling too, I get that. Um, it has two lyrical parts specifically that I want to bring up. First, uh, the funny part, the, the laughable verse. Uh, it's in the context of uh, jetting out of town and, and blowing off uh, your responsibilities in a sense, that type of thing. No one needs to know a thing. You can text your mother along the way. Then we'll throw our phones into the ocean. <laughs> Where else would you throw your phone? The ocean, of course. Uh, but the other part uh, really wrinkled my brain. Uh, the lyrics in the bridge. This life is short, let's waste our time. Your hand in mine, let's waste our time. Life is short, so let's waste our time? <laughs> Were you wasted when you wrote this? I mean, how does such a frivolous view of life make any sense in the context of this album's albeit dry and paper-thin babbling, about the life-shaking importance of love and the all-too-generalized uh, term faith. This is literally insane. I mean, the first track is called, Hey, This Is, Lo this is The Life. Uh, then there's another track called Living The Dream. Apparently more like, uh, let's waste the dream. I mean, the only rationale for the lyrics in this song is that maybe it's this sort of uh, contrasting what you expect uh, on purpose in order to make you think about the, the importance of life and what life really means. Maybe it's meant as a, a dynamic counter to the rest of the album, you know, forcing you to reconcile with what you really think is true. Is life and, and the time we're given meant to be wasted or are we meant to use it for something greater? But I think believing that this is what they meant is giving them far too much credit. I mean, nothing on this album would lead me to believe that they would ever try to write a song in this way, uh, speaking the antithesis of the message they're trying to send you for, for creative purposes. No, 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 no. I think it's much more rational to believe that this song is just massively and accidentally ironic uh, in its broader context. Regardless, it certainly capped the album off well, uh, as the vocals repeated and trailed off, waste some time, waste some time, waste some time. And as I listened, it reminded me of something I just did, something that took about 45 minutes of my time, listening, sitting, mentally vomiting, Something that really wasted my time. Not sure what it was though, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm already starting to forget. Uh, there's a link in the description box below this video for you to listen to this album for yourself. Uh, there's also a link to Satellites and Sirens Twitter. And if you're thinking, oh, tell me how you really feel, jerk. <laughs> Boy, did you hate this album. 
Lyrically, yes, uh, but musically, no, it was okay. Uh, I loved the song Stereo, I really did, there's that. Um, but let's end things on a fun note. Here's a small, weird anecdote, uh, some levity. I'm probably the only person in the world who thinks this, but every time I hear the title of this album, or say it out loud, Tanks, I can't help but think of an episode of The Office where Michael Scott is doing his prison mic bit, and uh, Andy says something kind to him and, and gives him a compliment or something, and he responds in some ridiculous sort of lisp and says, Tanks, Andy, tanks. <laughs> Yep, that's, that's where my brain goes. Uh, way off in left field in a meaningless, totally unrelated connection. Probably indicates that I've watched far too much of The Office in my time. Okay, we're way off topic, so uh, let's just be done here. <laughs> Thanks for watching this album review. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel. New album reviews release every Friday right here on this channel, and new track reviews release every Wednesday. If you have a question or a comment for me, about this album, about my thoughts about the album, uh, or about something else. Let me know. You can comment below this video. You could tweet at me at Discern Reviews. You could send me an email, discernreviews at gmail.com. Have you experienced this album from Satellites and Sirens? What did you think of it? Maybe you loved it. Maybe you think I'm the idiot. Well, this is the internet, so, uh, Come on in, you can have an opinion too. Um, let me know how you felt about this album. What is your review, in a sense? Anyway, thanks again for watching. Hope this helps. See ya.